Hey everybody, it's 2022 and it's long overdue for another Tesla road trip. I've got some free supercharger miles that expire in April next year and I want to use as many as I can. So I decided to go ahead and take this trip on the road instead of flying as usual. All right, I'll check in along the way, but let's get going in my 2020 Tesla Model 3 from Atlanta to Tampa. <laughs> All right, first thing I do is I charge overnight to 100% right at home in my garage. I'm starting off with a full tank, so to speak. Next up, I travel with various uh, charging adapters, including the new CCS adapter, tire pumps, uh, repair kits, all that stuff, just in case. And then, of course, now it's time to go ahead and put in that destination. Once I put the destination in, the Tesla navigation will figure out any charging stops along the way. But I'm going to go ahead and add a waypoint, which is a new feature, a stop in the middle, add as many as you want, and I'm going to stop at Bucky's because, you know, everyone says you need to go to Bucky's at least once, and I've never been there. So it will figure out stopping at Bucky's, and then, of course, the supercharger stops after that. And for how long you need to stop, and for how long you need to charge before continuing your destination, you do not need to fill it up each time because you only need to get enough juice to make it to the next charging stops. Um, and then we're on our way. So I'm going to let the Tesla full self-driving beta do most of the driving all the way there. And of course, highway driving is pretty simple for the auto steer and auto braking and lane changing system. All right, we're here at Bucky's, and I got to say, this is not only the biggest gas station I've ever been to, but it's the biggest convenience store I've ever seen. This thing's the size of a Target almost. And uh, they sell food, and they sell drinks, and they sell accessories and apparel and all kinds of cool stuff. But this is also going to be a 16-stall supercharger stop that's opening soon. I just missed the opening. Uh, should probably looks like it's about to open maybe in a week or two. Uh, but they got everything in. And then it's back on the road to that first charging stop. The full self-driving beta is doing an amazing job. Uh, and pretty much did 99% of the driving all the way there and all the way back. So I'm pretty happy with that. And for those of you who are saying you can't drive on the road with an EV, you can't do speed, you can't have the AC on. Uh, I drove as fast as I wanted to, had the AC on the entire time, no issues whatsoever. Because you're, you know, it's calculating for all of that when it figures out your charging stops. And um, the, the efficiency was also pretty amazing with the Tesla. Uh, I've forgotten since it's been a couple years since I did a road trip at just how close it is to the um, range and everything that it uh, estimates. And of course, that is still based on your driving. If you drive super fast, the range is going to go down. You drive super slow, the range is going to go up. You drive normal, and it's pretty much going to put you there where it says and how long it says it's going to do it. So once again, uh, this is the full self-drive, and I just kind of took my hand off the wheel so you can see it's about to make this tr turn behind the semi. So it's doing this all, all on its own, and I'm just there to kind of keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't do anything crazy or weird. But like I said, I had no crazy or weird things happen the entire trip. It did its thing, and I, was, uh, I arrived pretty well rested, and I usually hate driving long trips because I hate having to be you know driving long trips doing all the work so it's great when the car does all the work for me all right it's time to hit that first stop uh, which was after bucky's and it was a big disappointment after bucky's because after being in that gigantic center and then stopping at uh, cordell georgia which is like an old time supermarket uh, in front of the charger where it's basically you just want to go in and use the restroom and that's pretty much it uh, yeah, that was it was kind of a boring stop after Bucky's. But as you can see, it tells me it's going to take about 20 minutes before I can continue the trip. And uh, like I said, I got free supercharging, so this is costing me nothing to stay here. And uh, on my way on to the next stop once we hit that 20 minute mark. So um, you can always stay longer if you want to get more juice, maybe skip a stop. But you don't have to fill up each time. You're just going to charge enough to get to the next stop. There was a Walgreens behind me. It was probably more interesting than that uh, supermarket that's in front of me. And I think there's a, a Sonic over there on the right-hand side. That I probably should have stopped at that instead. 
But anyway, uh, the charging was pretty uneventful, no lines, no waiting. And on my way on to the next stop, which it looks like, uh, you know, we're again letting the car do its thing and driving. It's telling me to, you know, make sure I pay attention and keep my hands on the wheel every now and then. But for the most part, it's doing all the work, which is great. All right, on to the next stop, which is a new station I've never been to. Both of these are new stations I'd never uh, gone to before. And both were relatively, not only new, but empty. So like there was no waiting, no line whatsoever. And uh, plenty of stalls, clean with uh, amenities to go to the restroom, grab food, whatever it is you wanna do. Uh, for those of you who like to take a quick break on a road trip. So when people say, hey, you know, the downside is the charging that you have to do, which in this case is two stops before we get to the hotel in Tampa. Um, each one's, you know, 15, 20, 25 minutes at tops. Um, I don't mind because if even if the car did not, even if I didn't have enough range to make the entire trip, I would still be stopping because A, <laughs> I get my legs get tired. B, my bladder says, hey, it's time to stop and use the restroom. And so I just, I'd be stopping anyway. Maybe I wouldn't stop as long, but I would still be making these stops even if the car had enough range to make the entire trip. So having more range is always great. It certainly cuts down on what people refer to as range anxiety, but uh, I don't mind these little 20 minute stops here and there, especially if it's only a couple of them uh, along the way uh, to get all the way down to Tampa from Atlanta. So no problem for stopping for me. Um, and once again, the other thing you want to make sure is that um, even though you can use other route planners, like I put this into a better route planner before uh, the trip, and it had me stopping three times, which I kind of knew wasn't going to be the case since my car has a longer range than my previous car. But um, it just lets you know that it's not as accurate as the actual car is. The actual car is taken into account of everything whereas a better route planner is just doing an estimate. So a better route planner, uh, dot com is great for, you know, getting an idea of what the trip might look like, but the car is going to be the ultimate guide. So I usually rely strictly 100% on the Tesla navigation for that part of the trip. All right, arriving here in beautiful Tampa, and I chose the Westin for one reason, one reason only. Well, two reasons. I like the Westin. Number two, it has free charging. So all you do is pay for parking, and you wake up every day with a full charge because the valet or you can plug yourself in, either one. And this is great when you're going to be here for a few days because you wake up every day to a full charge. So we had a ball here in Tampa, beautiful weather, great time. All right, this Tesla road trip is a wrap. We had a ball here visiting friends and family in Tampa for a few days, and now it's time to voyage home. All right, road trip in reverse. Here we go. All right, well, this is pretty much going to be just a reverse of what we did coming down. It's uh, two stops to get back. We're going to stop at Bucky's once again and grab a couple souvenirs um, that we forgot to get the first time. And again, the car performed beautifully the entire way down. I've heard all these horror stories and read these horror stories of people trying to do road trips in other EVs. And I think a lot of time, number one, it's not so much the EV or the, the experience they had as much as it is the lack of experience they had in knowing what to do and how to do it. So with the Tesla, road tripping is extremely easy. But with any EV that's been sold in the last few years, um, road tripping should still be easy. Electrify America pretty much has enough uh, chargers to get pretty much anywhere you want to go in an EV today. And uh, even if you don't have access to the supercharger network, which soon you should have access, according to Tesla, that they're going to open it up to the rest of the EVs out there. Uh, but road tripping should be fun. It shouldn't be a chore. It shouldn't be something you're afraid of. It should be something you enjoy. And again, if I had to say, if there was a downside, the only downside, which is not a downside for me, but for some people it will be having to make a couple stops and charging for, you know, 15, 20, 25 minutes. That's about it. Uh, if that doesn't bother you, then uh, you're going to save money on gas. Because even if I was paying for the supercharging for this trip, uh, the supercharging would cost me basically about um, maybe 15, 20 bucks a stop. 
And so the entire trip might have cost me, you know, like, I don't know, 40, 80, somewhere between 40 and 80 bucks uh, worth of electricity and charging. And keep in mind that I charged at home where it was dirt cheap and charged at the hotel for the cost of the parking that I would have paid in any car. So uh, for me, you can't beat it in terms of the savings, uh, not only in gas, but just uh, not going to gas stations, even though some of these superchargers are now being located at gas stations. Like this one here at Busy B uh, is located right next to a gas station. And just like Bucky's will be a supercharger that is uh, a former gas station only. So you'll basically get the best of both worlds. Um, which I, if I were an owner of one of these type of establishments, I would absolutely be adding EV charging because you don't make the money on the gas or the electricity. You make the money on the people staying in your establishment, spending money on food and drink. So to me, that's the best, best way to go. And the car is going to do pretty much all the work telling you when and where you need to stop and for how long. And, um, even if I was paying, I would just plug in and that would be it. Made it home safely with no problems. Uh, here's a quick look at the trip. It's trip A, so 1,056 miles total on the trip, and no problems. I loved it.